Welcome to Barometer magazine from the Met Office. The latest edition is full of features all about our work with partners around the UK and around the world. We also take a look at the training the Met Office College provides to industries around the world. There's details of a new partnership that's addressing climate change and health. We have an interview with author and illustrator Tom McLaughlin, who talks about his new children's picture book, The Cloud Spotter. Plus, we explore the different types of forecasts that can help you have fun and stay safe this summer. From hand-drawn paper charts to today's digital forecasts, weather representation has changed a lot over the years. But what will tomorrow's forecasts look like? The Met Office Informatics Lab is looking at new ways of making environmental science and data even more useful. The Informatics Lab is a new team that we have created at the, at the Met Office and it involves people from science, from technology and from design. And the whole point of the lab is to make our environmental data and science useful for, for people outside the organisation. So at the moment we are working on 3D visualisation, we are trying to create uh, kind of visualizations that allow us to see the high resolution weather forecast in a very different way to what we have been traditionally doing. And these are uh, visualizations that allow you to interact with the data, so you can move it, you can rotate it. The whole concept of big data is a very kind of woolly concept and, and people find it very intimidating. But when you make the data accessible and people can really play with it, move the animation, go into certain places, fly through the clouds, it really brings the concept home. The real hope is the way that we work and the, the way we create things start just permeating through the office. Typically, it takes us around three years to create something from a new piece of science that we have developed in our scientific teams. I would like to see that only be in a, a few months. The Met Office recently hosted Design Storm, a one-day event aimed at encouraging university students to explore new ways of visualising the weather. Met Office design lead Ross Middleham tells us more. Un, deux et trois. Design Storm is a collaboration event. Uh, we've got three universities uh, coming together and we've got a morning of speakers um, from agencies and inspirational speakers and then we've got an afternoon of a design challenge um, focusing on, on social media content. I'm from Falmouth University. I'm a third year graphic design student but I've recently become interested in advertising and marketing in particular um, and I thought this day would kind of bring me into this um, environment. I wanted really to capture the fact that there was and young people here that were starting off in what is really a daunting new world of design. But it's all the same problems that we've all had, we've all been there, and in the end it's about trying to be as good as you can at the thing you, that you do. That's what you're going to be judged on. I'm Laurie Stansfield and I'm illustrating the content that's being raised today, things people are saying. There was a bit in the room where everyone reacted when it was said, which was, don't be shy. There was a lot of things about, I suppose it's graduates there in their final year that are going to have to present themselves to the world soon. Um, so it's a nice bit of advice. I empathise with it and I think the whole room did. This year, the Met Office celebrates 25 years at the forefront of global climate science. In that time, Met Office scientists have worked with people from around the world helping to shape global understanding of climate. One successful collaboration is helping to manage climate change in Kenya. Funded with UK aid and delivered by the Adaptation Consortium, the project increases access, use and the benefits of climate information services for people in Kenya. As climate change affects Kenya's seasons, traditional ways of forecasting are getting harder, threatening lives and livelihoods. The Met Office has been working with multiple partners to deliver improved access to weather and climate services. The project has proved a great success and helped the Met Office scoop the Outstanding International Collaboration Award at this year's British Expertise International Awards. Well, from Africa to Antarctica. The latest edition of Barometer looks at the work of the Met Office with the British Antarctic Survey. We caught up with Laura Patterson, Deputy Chief Meteorologist, who described some of the challenges of working in one of the world's most extreme environments.
The British Antarctic Survey is an institute of the Natural Environment Research Council and they specialise in um, polar research both in the Antarctic and in the Arctic. The Met Office sends a forecaster down to Antarctica every year. Um, we're there for about the five or six months of their summer programme. My role was working um, as a forecaster based mainly at the Rothera Research Base. The winds coming from um, across the mountains in the east um, would create some very treacherous um, weather conditions for the aircraft along the runway with quite different conditions at one end of the runway to the other and sometimes that would um, be quite a pressurised situation when you've got a plane circling in the sky and that everybody's looking at you for an answer of when the weather's going to clear. It was great to see how much of an impact um, what you did um, had on the on the base, um, and to be able to see the weather sort of up and up close and, in, and personal was was really really fascinating. That's just been a quick look at some of the articles in the latest edition of Barometer. The full edition is available online. That's it for now. Until next time, thanks for watching.